Hey y'all, this is going to be a rundown of how I like to do my warm-up routine. So I start out with a chromatic exercise where we're going to go one, two, three, four on the big string. And you want to pay a close attention to making sure you get your fingers near those frets. Not on top of them, but not too far back from them either because you get buzzes and stuff there. So the best way you want to do it is get your fingers real close to that next fret. Now with this hand, I'm going to try to go down, up, down, up. So I'm going to try to strictly alternate over here. Just go down the strings. Paying close attention to getting each finger near that new fret. Now you can go back right there, start with the down again. Now another thing you can do is when you get to the highest notes up here, you can take it up one and come back. That way you keep moving up the neck. You can make this a longer exercise and you can get used to all the different widths of the frets. Get into a steady little pace. One thing to mention also is that you, you definitely don't want to go like one, two, three, four, and then have a pause and then go to the next string. You want to keep this like rhythmically even. So you can go up as high up the neck as you want. I'm gonna try that again and count it off and you can play along with me if you like. One, two, three, four. Go up one. Up one. See if we can go a little faster. But that is really good for your coordination between the two hands, really good for your right hand picking, and obviously it's working all your fingers, getting them warmed up. So the other chromatic exercise I like to do, I go one and then two on the string below, and then back to the big string three, and then down the string to the four. And then you go to the fifth string and do the same. One, two, three, four. So it's a little tricky with this left hand until you get used to that. Now when you come back, start with the down again. Down, up, down, up. And I start on the little string going to the, to the second string. Okay, we can take that up the neck as well like this. One, two, three, four. Speed up a little bit, baby. Okay, so take that all the way up the neck. That's another good exercise. Then I like to get into the G major scale, five positions. But what I like to do with them also, besides just play the scale up and down, is do the thirds exercise where you go from the first note of the scale to the third note of the scale. And each note is another third. So then I'll also do, I'll do like all the positions of that and then I'll come back and do these fours. But while I'm on this first position, I'm gonna show you the fours too. So one, two, three, four, it's just four up the scale and then back to the second note, up four from it, so. Okay, 
And let's look at the second position. And if you need a more like slowed down breakdown of these uh, major scale positions, I have another lesson video on that. So once again, this is the second one. I'm gonna go ahead and do the, um, I'll do it one more time. thirds and then we'll do the fourths It takes a while so you really can get this the jumping strings and keep that whole down up thing going, you know. So take your time with it. Down up, 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 down up. And then third position, we'll do the whole position. thirds Okay, the fourth position. Do the thirds. And sometimes I'll change my fingers on how I do some of these things, but it's good to kind of have a consistent way of doing it. So if you if you keep kind of if it screws you up a lot, like try to stick to the same fingers that you used going up as going down, and you can get more consistent with which fingers you use. And then the more you do these, the more you improvise with these things, you can you can kind of change fingers and not get lost. So sometimes you know I'll go one way, and I'll, sometimes I'll go the other way. position. Do the thirds. And then fours. Okay, so that's the exercises and stuff I do for those positions in G. You might mix it up and do like F sharp, you know. So you're not always on the same, you know, exact key, the same fret markers and stuff. Mix it up a bit. Maybe start on A, a flat. You know? Okay, another thing I'll do, then I'll look at the minor pentatonic, let's say for E. I'll do the flat fifth in there also. And I'll do some little like uh, bending and kind of bluesies. Mix 
it up a bit, you know, the second position of pentatonic minor. And then you might think of the, where the flat fifth goes in there. Third position. Fourth position. But think about the where the flat fifth goes. Fifth position. And do a little, you know, jamming around it. So by doing all that, I'm getting my, I'm all warmed up on my right hand. I got my down up picking going good. I'm going to be able to, maybe be able to improvise and move around the neck well. And all these fingers are working. I've thought about my different scale shapes and, you know, when you're improvising, you want, you got to be able to like visualize those whole shapes of those positions and everything to really be able to see where you want to go and to be able to move in from others into others, you know, fluently. So basically that's what I do when I, when I get a chance to warm up, I'll go through those chromatic exercises. I'll move them all the way up the neck. I'll really concentrate on the down up picking. I'll go through the five major scale positions and do those thirds exercises and four notes in a row exercise. Then I'll go into my pentatonic positions and with the flat fifths in there and I'll do some like bending. some stuff like that going and then I'm pretty much warmed up I'm ready to do the gig do the practice do the session whatever you know we're gonna add some new stuff to this chromatic think about where the accent is on that one and two and so what if we change the accent to be on the two so the two is like the downbeat so this would be an upbeat on the one and one and two and three and four right so the one is the pickup note and the two is the real downbeat and one and two and we come back we do the same thing with the up to start on the third fret so the third is going to be an up stroke pickup note and then up on the seven so that's one thing you can do there so that would be putting the accent on the second note now how about if we put the accent on the third note one and two and three Now we put it on the pinky note, so it's going to be like three pickup notes. And as always, run that all the way up the neck. Okay, um, another thing I like to do with chromatics is get into a thing where you're just kind of uh, improvising. And then we're getting into this, you can also swing that kind of thing instead of just going one, two, three, and four, and E, B. Put the swing on there.
mix it up. You know, mix it up, come up with little things that you think sound cool. Okay, so that's some of the chromatic exercise things. And obviously, like I said, go up all the way up the neck as much much time as you have. Keep it going. You know what I mean? You're only going to get better. You're only going to get used to the different widths of frets. So let's go back and look at the pentatonic minor positions. Here's the first one. Now we're going to do exercises with that. We're going to go up four notes at a time with our down up down up picking and then I'm gonna start on this three three oh two oh I'm going up the strings as I go there three on the E string and then upstroke open two on the A and then upstroke on the D string open so I'll do the first two sets of four again okay then we're gonna start on the A string then we're going to come down to the, go to the two, the B note here on the A string. Two, O, two, O. And then we're on the D string open. See how that works? Two, O, three, O. And then we got O, three, O, three. And we're coming back. Start with the down stroke. So we still have down, up, down, up. And then down, up, down, up. And that was O, three, O, two, and the G. And eventually you want to get it where you don't have any pauses between the sets of four. Three and four and. back three and four and all right now there's another exercise we can do with threes so we're gonna go those little sets of threes like that so this becomes interesting at the right hand picking because you got down up down and then you got up down up on that next set so i'm going to go kind of slow so you can see it can be a little tricky you got your down up down and then you got up down up and you can put in some little like pull-offs and stuff as you go Stuff like that. And you could also do hammer ons on that other one, the fours. So we take that little slow we got. Sometimes I'll put a different finger in there so I can get it going kind of quick, you know. Sometimes you might share a fret with the same finger. Sometimes it'd be like a riff, like a. See how you could have dragged that same finger. But you might use that different one so they get that clarity. They don't, they don't sound like they're like ringing together if you don't want that. Okay, so then let's look at second position. We're going to do the, this is the position. Second position, E minor pentatonic. We're going to do the fours exercise. So they take a little bit of time to get used to, but you get used to them. 
Sometimes you might move to those easier fingers if you want. Alright, and they got the, the thirds. We start on the second note. We always start on the second note on the threes one. Not thirds, but threes on it. So down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Okay, third position. Fours. That one's a little bit tricky. This is a little bit easier than the other. Okay, fourth position is the, here's the scale. And if you want a, more of a breakdown of all these, I have a, a different video that I'll put a link to right here um, that shows you, that takes more time on all these pentatonic positions. Uh, here's the fours. Sorry if you're going fast on this, but it's basically a kind of a thing, like once you understand the concept of it, then you don't really need to watch somebody play every note of it too much. You can kind of get it in your head and you can do it yourself, you know. So here's the thirds on this. Once you do these a few times in a few different positions, you got you get the hang of it. Okay, fifth position. Fours. All right, then we got the uh, threes. Okay, and then let's look at um, another thing that you can add to your warm-up routine is arpeggios. So we'll look at the arpeggios in the key of G. So here is G major 7 arpeggio. Okay, so 3... And then two and five on the A string, and then four and five on the D string, and then four on the G string, three on the B string, two and three on the E. And you can add that two there at the end. This is the root, though, of course. Now I'm trying to do totally alternate picking, even jumping up those strings too. So down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Okay, now here's the A minor 7. And I have another lesson video that goes into arpeggios more too, so you can check that out. So 5 and 8, and then 7, and then 5, 7, and then 5, and then 5, 8, 5, 8. 
5757. So that's like the A minor pentatonic scale. But it has no D's in it. So it only has the A, C, E, G, A, C, E, G, A, C. Okay, so the same shape for the B minor 7, the 3 chord of the key of G. And then we got C major 7 on the 8th fret here. 8, or 8, 7, 10, 9, 10, 9, 8, 7, 8. Same as the G was. Now D7 is up here in the 10th fret. 10, 9, 12, and then I'm going to move my first finger to this 10 here on the D string. That helps put the rest of it play out easy. So 10, 9, 12, and then 10, 12, and then 11, 10, 13 on the B string, 10, 14 on the E string. And we can use that little note down there if we want, that's C. Now here's the E minor 7, same as the other minor 7s, 12, 15, and then 14, and then 12, 14, 12, 12, 15, 12, 15. Okay, then we have the 7 chord, the F sharp minor 7 flat 5th. Okay, so this is going to be 14th and 17th, actually let's do it down here, we'll see it next to the G. So it's going to be 2 and 5, and then 3, that's the flat 5th. So this is part of, that'd be just part of an F sharp minor, those two notes, F sharp A, and then you'd normally have that one, but this is that flat 5th here. So 2, 5, 3, and then the next string, 2, 4, and then 2, 5, 5, 2, 5. So 5, 2, and then 5, and then 5, 2, and then 4, 2, and then three, five, two. And then back to G. So let's look at all those chords. There's a G major seven. Here's the A minor seven. B minor seven. C major 7, and I'm doing like a thumb on that 8th fret. You could do it this way too. I kind of like the ring of that. You can get that higher note there. So that's it. 7, 8, 9, 9. With the 8 on the bass on the E right there, muting the A string. C major 7. Then we got D dominant 7. Sometimes you might play like that, kind of a jazz way. Okay, then here we got the E minor 7, and then this is the half diminished, the F sharp minor 7 flat 5, it's like 9, 10, 9, 10, and that's the F sharp bass note, then you'd be back to like your G major 7. Now let's do this as well, let's look at those arpeggios, but if we were in the key of C, so that's going to make everything different because we're on the A string now with our bass note instead of the E string. So we have C major 7 chord. So that's 3, 2, 5, 4, 5, 5, 3, 7. We can use that 2 back here. C major 7. Now here's D minor 7, the, two, the second chord in the key of C. So that's 5, 8, 7, and then 5, 7, 6, 5, 8, D minor 7. And then we got E minor 7, 7th fret, same shape. And then we would have F major 7, that's 8, 10, 9, 10, and you do the 8 on the bottom too. F major 7. So that's 8, 7, 10, 9, 10, 10, 8, 12. Then let's go down here for the G7. So we got 3, 5, 3, 4, 3, 3, 3 chord. 
Now we're gonna do this is the dominant seven. That's where you move that first finger there to that third fret. And a dominant seven has that flat seventh note. That's why we could use that one, two frets down from there with that. Okay, then we got the sixth chord is the A minor seven. Then we would have the seven chord, which would be the minor seven flat five. Here's another way to do that. Seven, 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 nothing on the A, muted, and then six on the B string. So that's your minor seven looks like that, but when you flat the five, you get that note in there. So that would be That one doesn't get used a whole lot. Then you'd be back to your C major seven. There's a cool little C chord, C major six nine, to end on a little tasty jazzy note. So the different inversions there, this is like a three, two, two, three, three. And then when you come up here to the seventh fret, it's like seven, 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 eight, eight. And if you hit that eight up there, you can. And then I went to the octave of this one up here on the highest, the 15th and 14th. Another good one like that is the minor six, nine. That's when you go three, one, two, three, three. All right, well that has been a warm up routine part two, the kind of extended, if you have more time version. So thanks everybody for watching. Please like and subscribe and uh, peace out. We'll see you soon. Thanks a lot. <laughs>